Colorado beat Colorado State. I think that's what most people expected themselves to be saying. But, friends, where were you? Where were you when Colorado completed the fifth largest fourth quarter comeback in program history? I was in the St. Louis Airport Marriott, for example. But where were you? And what's so crazy is pretty much everyone will be able to tell me a month or a year from now where they were when they watched this. Because literally everyone watched it. At least you watched the first part of the game. Now, I know some of you have bedtimes, and some of you shirked those bedtimes last night. But man, what a, what a revolution we've seen in college football viewership, coverage, conversation, etc. No one thought they'd be talking about this stuff. Uh, Colorado yesterday had a fight taken to them that they probably weren't ready for. I think most people didn't expect it, but they scored on one of their first 10 drives. And then you want the paper popper. You want the padlock stat. Then they scored in five of their final six drives. Shadur Sanders is a star in college football right now. Shadur Sanders is putting up numbers that would make him a star if he were Shador Thomas or Shador Simpson or Shador Myers. It's not a Sanders thing. It's a playmaker thing. Uh, the secret's out on them. No, People know they can't run the ball. It's all on him. And all he's done so far is he's gone up and put up 400 a game. Uh, he's got 10 touchdowns, one interception. He's a 79% completion guy. 98-yard touchdown drive when they needed it the most last night. And in the midst of all of it, I'm having a conversation, FaceTime no less, with a dear friend of the program. We'll leave it at that. And this person tells me, oh, this is not college football. The way Dion carries himself, the showmanship, the selfishness, this person's words, not mine, that is not college football. And so I reply to said person calmly, respectfully, as you would expect from me. I said, what is college football? Very interesting. A lot of people have this take. A lot of people have this take that, oh, Dion, what he's doing, that's not college football. You know what? Scratch that. A lot of people don't have the take. Some people have the take that, oh, Dion, his attitude, his approach to the sport, the showmanship, that's not college football. So I ask those kinds of folks, well, what is college football? Define it for me. I thought I had a pretty good idea, but apparently I don't know. I only cover the sport year round. So what is college football? And so I asked someone yesterday, and they say, well, college football's coaching. It's grinding. It's hard work. It's X's and O's. College football is the players. College football is tradition. College football's not this. And so you know what I did yesterday? I just happened to flip on Cal's game for a second. I turned on Cal. And it's five minutes until kickoff, and someone posted on Twitter, you know, they do that panorama of the stadium, and it's like one-eighth of the way full. And the thing about it is, Cal's got some good coaches. Cal's got X's and O's. Cal's got tradition. They got Aaron Rodgers formerly played there. Tony Gonzalez played there. Uh, Marshawn Lynch. They've got guys who have come through there. Why is that place an afterthought? They got all the things that you claim make up college football. Why is it an afterthought? The reason is because this is not the college football business. I've said this before. I have had this conversation with coaches. Some of them have agreed with me. Others have disagreed with me when I've asked them, what business do you think you're in? And they'll say, I'm in the coaching business. Some of them will. And I'll say, no, you are a coach. But what business are you in? What industry are you in? You're in the entertainment industry. There are some people who, who gravitate towards that and they embrace it. But there are others, both coaches and fans, who scoff at that notion. And I'm like, why? Why do you resist it? It's very obvious. Coaches do not make $8 million a year because of their X's and O's acumen. Because no one fills a stadium because of X's and O's. They fill it because they're entertained by what it produces. There's a lot of strategery in lacrosse. They don't fill stadiums like they do in football to watch that. Equestrian is a finely tuned competition that is really fascinating to watch, but not watched by 100,000 people. And the reason is because it's not as entertaining as football is. Deion Sanders just gets that more than most people because he himself is a showman. But the thing about it is, and I think the closer you got to that program, the more you'd find this out, there's like this barrier. It's more like a mesh fence because one side can see the other. There's this mesh fence, and on one side is Deion Sanders behind the scenes running University of Colorado football program. And then there's the other one. And that guy 
is Coach Prime, and that's the guy you see when the red light comes on because he understands this is about X's and O's. It is about recruiting. It is about relationships. It's about developing. It's about execution. But you know what else it's about? It's about promotion. It's about marketing. It's about presentation. It is about showmanship. It is about that, especially at Colorado. Now, if Deion Sanders was the head coach at Ohio State, some of that would take care of itself because that Ohio State brand markets itself. You don't have to do it. But at Colorado, the situation he took over, you do have to do it. I can't even imagine the infrastructure and logistics that have to be in place right now to handle the load that they had to handle yesterday and to handle the influx of everything from credential requests to interview requests. You cannot begin to imagine what kind of heat-seeking position that is at the University of Colorado right now. I'm not familiar with those folks, and yet I still tip my cap to them because um, I, don't, I don't care how ready they thought they were. They were not ready for this. This is not a wave. It's a tsunami. It's a great one, but it's a tsunami in Boulder, Colorado, no less. How about that? You never thought you'd be in tsunami warning conditions there, but even there, it can find you. Dion gets it. This is the entertainment business. There's football at the core of it, but it's the entertainment business. Uh, there's also bad news. And the bad news is there is a tax that comes along with Deion Sanders being in your sport. It's called the Dion tax. And the Dion tax is casuals care too. Casuals are attracted to this too. Drive-by fans are attracted to it. And, and the drive-by casual has a couple of things in common. Number one, they hardly know anything about the sport. Number two, they're the first to mouth off about the sport. And therefore, you will get the wildest, most outlandish, off-the-wall, window-licking, stupid takes that you will ever hear in your life from the drive-by casual crowd about Colorado. They know nothing about the sport. Normally, the only time you hear from these folks is NFL draft time, when people who watch college football for about two weeks out of the year start to pontificate and mouth off about our sport. Well, the, the one bit of bad news, the Dion tax, if you will, is the folks you normally only have to hear from during NFL draft time, they're here now, and they want to talk to you about Colorado football, and then eventually they're going to want to talk to you about the Pac-12 and the Big 12, and then lo and behold, they're going to have takes on conference championship races, and then they're going to be right there in the thick of college football playoff talk. And if you disagree with them, you get labeled. That's the Dion tax. I'd, I would never apologize for it if I were him. I'm just telling you, it's here. It, here. Here's what it is. It's basically how soccer fans view people like me when the World Cup comes around. Because they know that's the only time I'm going to watch soccer. And I do have an opinion or two. Now, I largely try and keep it to myself. But I do have an opinion or two on soccer. Mainly, I see why the sport's not for me. I don't, I don't bemoan it. Like I, I, I respect your passion for it. But I find out why soccer is not for me when I watch the World Cup. But I still watch the World Cup. It's very, very entertaining, very fascinating to me. Uh, we've got like the World Cup of college football happening right now, and we got those sorts of folks being attracted to our sport by Deion Sanders. So there is one downside to this, but there are infinite amounts of upside to it. And the other thing is, for all these folks talking about how terrible the opening month, or at least the opening three weeks of the college football schedule was, he saved you. Deion saved you. He's giving you something to talk about. Pure Bonnie Raitt style. He gave you something to talk about. Now this week, you don't need it. Although he'll be right in the thick of it again when they go to Oregon, you don't need it. Like we, we got Notre Dame, Ohio State. We got FSU, Clemson this week. We got all kinds of big time matchups. But he's here to stay. That brand, that name's here to stay because they are sitting here three and O. Oh. And they are, I heard someone say this yesterday and they were dead on the money. They are the story of football, not just college. Colorado is the story of the sport of football right now. And that's even after Roger Goodell's big bad NFL has taken the field. So I salute, I clap, I accept the Dion tax that comes along with it. They've got Oregon this week on the road. Then they've got Southern Cal next week at home. And then they go to Arizona State and boy... Boy, do I have something for you later with Arizona State. Whew. But anyway, congrats to Deion in Colorado. 43-35 the final in overtime. They are now 3-0. and